How's it going, everybody? It is your favorite apostates. My name's McKay. And I'm Jordan. Oh, f I need to redo it. I'm McKay. And I'm Jordan. There we go. I'm on a streak. On. Can't ruin the streak. Before we get started today, we just wanted to announce that next week's episode is going to be on Monday because we are coordinating with a brand to do a giveaway. And if you are on our Instagram, go over there and check it out. We have already talked about that giveaway that is going on. So Monday, you'll see what's happening here. Check out our Instagram to know what's going on ahead of time. Also, again, because... I want to make sure that we're helping out our awesome friends over at the Exmo Candle Co. Check out our self-care day candle. It's amazing. It smells amazing. We collaborated with Jen and Adri over there at the Exmo Candle Co. to create this scent and the branding surrounding it, and it helps them out. And you can get an awesome candle for the holiday season or whatever. The end of the year, you know, just blow it out, whatever. And you support a small business and us to a small degree. So it's pretty awesome. We love it. I am already annoyed <laughs> by today's topic and we have not even begun. And somebody's going to watch this and be like, wow, Jordan, are you okay? You look depressed. We get those comments from time to time. Time to time. Sometimes <laughs> it's just my face. We're fucking dead inside. There's just nothing you could do about it. Between grad school <laughs> and YouTube and work and everything else, I am suffering from a little bit of my brain going dark. So please be compassionate to me yeah. during this difficult time. Thank to you. To be clear, we like doing this and she loves work. It's grad school. That's <laughs> the major detractor. It is kidding me. So... That's why my face looks like it's going to slide off at any given moment. But I am extra annoyed and extra just, I don't even have the words to explain today because we are talking about Joby again today. Again, I did it intentionally that time. We are beating this to death, but honestly, it needs to be talked about still because this it just video, keeps getting worse. This video in particular was posted in the Eight Passenger Snark subreddit and I saw it and I got irate. So I knew we had to make a video about it. So this video is going to make me irate. So the title of this video is, Are You Frustrated With Therapy? There Is An Alternative. So now, allow me, my friends, to remind you that I... I am in graduate school, getting my MSW. I have my master's in social work. I have one semester left. After this one. And I am halfway done with this one. So I will have my MSW in May of 2023. So I am very close to the end. I am also currently a therapist intern at a private practice. I have my own caseload of clients that I see personally. I am under the supervision, obviously, of a supervisor because I have not yet graduated. But that is what I do during the week. So I provide therapy under my supervisor and her license currently. And I am supervised by her currently. <laughs> so these opinions that I express in this video are solely my opinions. They are given additional context because of my background and what I am doing currently. My opinions currently do not reflect the opinions of my boss, the private practice which I work for, the clinicians which I also work for, or the university that I currently attend. So let's just make that very clear. These are my personal opinions backed by my personal slash professional experience that I have currently. Are we clear? Crystal... We're, we're clear like the crystal in the celestial room okay. at the Mormon temple. My baby. personal opinions in context of the professional experiences that I have had so far and the schooling that I have been taught thus far. Now, allow me to also say sometimes therapy isn't a vibe. Sometimes you're not at a point in your life when therapy is helpful. Sometimes you haven't found the right therapist and... Finding the right therapist can sometimes be a challenge. And so therapy might not be the right thing for you at this point in time. It is something that everybody should explore. If you are getting frustrated with therapy because you're not feeling like you're making progress, then it's not necessarily the therapy that's the issue. It's probably the therapist. So 
if you feel like it's not working, you probably need to find another therapist. Are there situations where you feel like therapy is just not for you as a whole? Sure. Absolutely. Sure. Of course. But generally, therapy is a good idea for everyone, and I highly encourage it. I go to therapy. McKay has gone to therapy. Most of the therapists I work with go to therapy. So, you know, it's just kind of beneficial in a million different ways. So that being said, now that I've given my million hours long disclaimer, <laughs> let's get into this video. This one, it was uploaded last week, October 4th. It's only, it's got 2,800 views. 2,000 of those are probably lurkers like us. <laughs> And notably, Jordan said that when she had originally seen this, there were comments in the comments section. Now that I'm looking at it as we're recording this, there's not a single comment. So they deleted they're them. probably deleted. Uh, because as you all know, Ruby and Jody love to work in a vacuum. They don't like pushback. They are truth, as they have declared previously. And when you go against truth, then you get deleted, I guess. So... <laughs> We'll do this little transition. Or blocked. Or blocked, yeah, honestly. Or you get kicked out of the house in some people's cases. Mr. Worldwide! Sorry. We'll do a little transition. We'll get this going. And uh, I don't know. We'll see if we can make it all the way through. Jordan might end this one. I'm going to rage quit. I already know. <laughs> Okay, just to catch anybody up to speed who might be new here, we've talked about this like numerous times, but just in case, Jody is a currently licensed therapist by the board. What is it? Doppel. Doppel. What does Doppel stand for? Department of Professional Licensing. There you go. So she has a current standing license. However, she's not act or she's not. Her license is active, that license. but she's working as a coach right now. Yeah, which, in my opinion, is not a great look, especially if she were to return to using that license after she's been doing this bullshit. Not something that I would agree with. Ruby is whoever the f She's a former YouTuber. She used to be the mom in the Eight Passengers family vlog channel. And for whatever reason, with no schooling or formal instruction of any of the sort, she is now working alongside Jody as a coach. So this is what they do all the time. They do little videos and trainings and retreats and all kinds of shit. Other videos on these yeah, too. so go check it out. Um, but we'll get this started. Are you tired of being angry? Are you tired of yelling all the time? Are you tired of? Are you telling on yourself? Are you telling on yourself? I like how they have the evangelist microphones. Mike's, it's Britney. And I'm almost fucking positive that they're just using the camera audio. Like, doesn't sound like those are plugged into anything. It's the <laughs> if Britney not, mic. you should. You should Put some more money into your mics because they sound You're like dog shit. You're going to have to pull up a picture of the Britney mic. It's Britney, bitch. Oh, yeah. That's what it gives <laughs> Britney me. Spears for the listeners in, in case you need a little context. Hmm. I love the preview. are not good listeners, ineffective communicators, and failures at their job. Ooh. Mm. Yikes. That's I'm a therapist. <laughs> Ouch. Hold up. Pause? What the fuck? Hold up. I love the coming up on this episode of what in the f is this train wreck <laughs> situation here. I don't, hurt. I don't take that personal. <laughs> okay. I just love that this is a conversation coming up. I love being able to talk about agency. It, 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 and to make it clear too, we're not coaching either. This is completely different from anything in this world that you're. I'm sorry, what? What, what is the name of your Instagram? <laughs> Connections Coaching, Connections Classroom. What? So what are, what, what are you exactly? We're it's probably going to come back to this at some it's point. It's not coaching. This is about your God-given gift of agency to choose. Oh, it's revelation. They're saying it's not coaching because we've called them out on it being coaching and it being unethical. And oh, she's okay. a therapist. So it's teaching. There's a word relative to classroom. The verb is teaching, to teach, you know? 
Are you frustrated with therapy? This font is awful. I'm Jody Hildebrandt. I'm Ruby Frankie, and welcome we back. We need little name tags that pop up like that. She probably made those in Canva. Shout out, I'ma do that. <laughs> to connections. Are you frustrated with your mental health? Are you tired of feeling tired? <laughs> Are you tired of feeling depressed, lonely, anxious, worried, communication problems? Hold That's on. That's just being a human. Did they change the name of their channel because of that? I swear to God, it used to be Connections Classroom or Connections Coaching. The website's always been Connections, I'm pretty sure. Well, it said Connections Classroom on there, so. Well, their website, I'm pretty sure, is Connections It's just classroom. Connections. Anyway. They ain't fooling anybody. Yeah. Conflicts, confusion, feelings of being manipulated, and mm. also feelings of being a manipulator. Yeah. Are you tired of being angry? Are you tired of yelling all the time? Are you tired of therapy? Mm -hmm. hmm. So we're here to- Bro, that almost looks like the bi flag. Bi pride. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Shout out to all the bisexuals out there. They're never going to use that ever again. <laughs> it's it's pretty close. I mean- It's, it's, it's getting pretty close. It's almost trans, co trans pride colors too. They're rolling over. Their, their brains right are going to implode right now. You understand how to live a life where you can have some liberation from these modalities of mental health, therapy being one of them. We want to teach you about principles of truth and why it is that principles of truth actually heal you as a soul instead of just kind of cover up the symptomology that you might be experiencing. Yeah, we're not here to manipulate you out of your reality. We're here to present what your reality is and to show you where you can choose, where your agency is to make choices. Connections is different than any modality that you have ever experienced, I guarantee you. And it's you know more like going to Mormon church Sunday say, school. You know what? who else said things like that? Joseph Smith. This is nothing like you've ever experienced before. It's not like any other church this, is out there. This is We're the a church, but it's different. This is the most correct book that's ever been written. God. <laughs> okay, Joe. <laughs> Calm down, bro. Also, they speak, they got a three camera setup. The audio is dog shit. Like they, you could have cut is. one of those cameras off and focused on your audio because I, I am almost positive these mics are not connected. They're to not because it's too echoey. It is. It sounds way, like the camera and, audio. Obviously, I'm not going to toot my own horn. We have some echoes going on and everything like that in this room because it's needlessly tall. But clearly but, they're willing to spend the money on three cameras in yeah. this rented space because I don't think this is either of their houses. So they, Maybe they have an office space. That, it's weird that there's a kitchen, though. It is. This gives the vibes of like... A house that no one lives in like college apartment complex common space yeah to me why or a model home we understand yeah. that because you are a soul you have a spirit inside you your spirit is governed by living and choosing principles of truth and when people understand what that means principles of truth then they have outcomes because they use their agency to choose principles of truth the outcomes create Connection. No. Connection is a fruit of using agency in ways of truth. And so along with connection comes peace. It comes clarity. I don't walk around any longer confused about stuff. I mean, somebody could say something and I could feel. I did not hear a single thing that these people, that was f just word soup, it is total. honestly. It, if you guys want to play a game at home, and by game, if you want to die, every time she says connections, take a sip. And every time she says truth, take a shot. You will die. Do not do that. <laughs> a tinge of confusion. But that's because someone is saying something that possibly is not in the truth or something that I don't understand. And so I can ask questions. I have skills. How many times have I said that? I'm yeah. so grateful, Ruby, <laughs> that I have skills because I just ran Me into too. an experience that was so challenging and I'm so grateful that I didn't go into depression and I didn't 
you know, leave the experience anxious and lost and confused and feeling like someone hurt me. How many of you have gone to do a job and found the right tool for the job and you're like, oh, so grateful I have the right tools for the job. Or maybe you've done a job and you didn't have the right tools and then you felt the frustration and the how much harder it was to accomplish that job. So, it is so much harder to just run to Lowe's and get the right tool. <laughs> this is just such garbage, you guys. Like there is nothing that these two are offering that is like some unique, life-changing, world-changing, mental health-changing thing. Like, they're literally just taking the most basic aspects of life, repackaging them with different words, and handing them back to you. I'm pretty sure that it's pretty self-explanatory that it's better to do, to do a job with the tools you have to do the job. Like, the tools that are helpful to you. So, like... I'm pretty sure we can all put two plus two together and understand why that would be helpful. Yeah. Well, like, I, it's not groundbreaking. There's no. nothing about this that's groundbreaking. Well, and I would even say that metaphor falls short because they're saying basically that everybody is doing the same job and they have the tools that will get that job done when that's not the case. Everybody lit has a different lived experience. Everybody has different things going on in their lives. And there's no one size fits all which is what they're advertising their you programs just to be. Yeah. And you have all the tools. It's, it's not there's so many different shaped pegs like it's not all circle shaped pegs well and they're gonna say that therapy is not the thing that helps find no. the tool yeah when therapy is in fact a tool to help manage anything and everything that's going on in your life yeah i think it's important to recognize also it's not you i think they're painting it as if Maybe people are frustrated with therapy in relation to what a particular therapist was doing. Because like you said earlier, people don't always jive with particular therapists. Sometimes it takes a couple attempts to find somebody that works with you. But they're not the ones who are going to be doing the work. Mm -hmm. You are going to be doing the work. If you have things in your life that you're having trouble with, you're going to be fixing those things or remedying those things, coping with those things. And they're going to help you guide you in the process of developing those coping mechanisms. Well, and I agree with what Ruby said, which is. Oh shit. Say. Oh shit. I agree with what Ruby said in the beginning. I think she was quoting somebody that submitted a question or themselves that submitted the question that some therapists suck. And I 100% agree. Some therapists suck. Some of yeah. them just generally, some of them are just not great. Some, there are people who get into the field for the wrong reasons. There yeah. are people who have narcissistic tendencies that aren't managed, so they get transferred to clients. Like there, there are aspects where therapists are just crap, and there are some therapists that just aren't going to jive with you and your personalities don't match. And you might have gone to a therapist that uses a modality that just doesn't work for you. Like they might have been too like woo-woo for you. They might have been too rigid. They might not have been flexible enough or taking your feedback and listening to you and prioritizing, helping you with the things that you want to work on. So like, it's not just therapy. It's any profession. Like it's yeah. any helping profession. Think about shitty doctors that you've had before. Yeah. Every woman especially has gone to a doctor who's like, Oh my God, this is just the fucking worst. So this goes for any for profession. Real. These two aren't like providing this groundbreaking solution because if they were, they would need to provide it for every single fucking profession that exists on the planet. To go back to the metaphor, some tools, even though they're the right tool, they just fucking suck. It's true. So some brands and you have just to learn. garbage. You have to learn. And you have to recognize that not all tools, like if you're thinking of a therapist as a tool, not all of them are the same. So you're going to yeah. have ones that aren't molded to you or aren't helpful. And you're going to have some that just suck. And so you've got to shift. And this isn't me singling out therapists. This goes for any profession. Yeah. For sure. Therapy and other modalities are created by philosophies and theories that humans have created. Philosophies of man mingled with scripture. Well, that's what she just said. Humans. We've done our very best efforts. At it's the coded language, dude. <laughs> understanding For Mormons. why people are sick. 
Yeah, why they do what they do, why they show up the way they show up. And why we think the way we think. Mm -hmm. However, we are leaving out a critical component, and that is the component of the soul. Which of course, there was are. something missing. There is always something souls. missing. And our souls are actually governed by truth. And when we use our agency to reinforce oh what we already intuitively know inside of ourselves, like for example, it's important to be honest. Like it's critical that you're Let honest. me go back to this real quick. Well, let me say something about this also. Notice how the only, uh, the only word capitalized in either of these lists is truth. truth. Well, I was these also going to say, weird, dude. look at this list. I mean, she's got psychology on the right, and these things are not she didn't all put it in quotation. psychology, like <laughs> genetics. I mean, they play a role, but that's not psychology, nor are chemicals. Like, they play a role. <laughs> chemicals. <laughs> but, okay. So, the other thing is, when you look at the stuff that they have under their list, so, like, principles, choice, accountability, those are all words that I use with my clients when they come up as needed because those are just part of being a human. Like part of going to therapy, especially if you're having a faith transition or if you've gone through like a really big grief or loss, sometimes it requires reorienting yourself, reorienting yourself and looking at your values. And your values and principles are the things that guide your life. And so these two have taken these words and like monopolized them and been like, these are connections things. When in reality, these are things that people use in their everyday life. Like yeah. accountability. Like there is a level of accountability for every single human that walks the planet for something. And so therapists can help you see where in your life you can take accountability for shit that everybody has bad patterns. Everybody has yeah. unhealthy coping skills. Like that's just a fact of life. So we get accountable for those things, recognize them, fix them and move on. So like this shit is not like, exclusive to connections and there are plenty of therapists who operate out of the idea of everyone having a soul and a spirit and there are some woo woo therapists out there that believe these things and so if that's something that jives for you you can find a therapist who does those things Peace. you can look at their bios a lot of times they'll put things that are relative to those kinds of things that they believe in their bios things that they have experience with and there's many therapists who operate out of that, including peace. Like I would say for most therapists in the field, they hope that what they're helping their clients do is achieve peace and help them find that so that they aren't so at war with their brain and their thoughts. And so the fact that these two have like put this all together in a package and been like, this is what fixes people and only we can do it is just absolute bullshit. Or fixing people, that's also just a dangerous precedent. That's not a precedent. thing. You can't fix yeah. people. Let me explain this because it's in the list. When I was talking about the philosophy, philosophies of man mingled with scripture, that's a reference in the temple, which you can watch the video series that we have on the temple, the Mormon temple. One of the parts when you're watching a movie, crazy, if you haven't come in contact with this concept, you're like, what the fuck, a movie? Um, one of the lines that Satan says is when he's asked by Peter, James, and John, who go down to see Adam and Eve in the world, they ask Satan what has been taught to Adam and Eve, and he replies with the philosophies of man mingled with scripture. So the idea behind that kind of language is like, this kind of stuff comes from Satan, or at least that's how it comes off to me when they use that kind of language well and they act like she says theories of man so like mm, theories of man and yeah. i mean it's truly what it is like we are fallible people and everybody yeah. has their shit like freud was one fucked up individual did he have a lot of amazing things that he brought to the table to generally understanding the brain and psychology and how we operate absolutely but was that dude also fucked yeah so it's like you got to balance these things. Like we're not saying that theories of man are, you know, every, like every therapy problem is going to be solved by a theory. Cause that's just not the case. Like we take theories into account, but it's not like the basis for which we exist. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's also the implication that this is God given God yeah. revealed. And so God can only solve these problems. Yeah. See to reinforce what we already intuitively know inside of ourselves, like for example, 
it's important to be honest. Like it's critical that you're honest. We learned this what when we were three. Yeah. Yep. It, it is imperative that you learn how to be <laughs> responsible for yourself in very specific areas, your perceptions, your emotions, your behaviors, and your outcomes. You must be responsible for all of those things. It is also another principle of truth is to be humble, which means that you're open and you're willing and you're teachable. Mm -hmm. That you don't sit in the spot of saying, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I I'm fine. I don't need your help. I already got I it. I guess that's why we are distortion. Your truth, we're distortion. Cause Obviously. I am not humble to listen to your bullshit. I understand that. I'm better than you. Yeah. Or you sit in a posture which is denigrating and say, I'm stupid. I can't. Don't tell me. I'll forget. I'm really bad at this. Dude, I'm all of those things. Right. <laughs> so those are two positions called distortion that you can choose to go into versus going into a place of humility, which is teach me. Mm -hmm. What is this about? And when you live those principles and other principles that are principles of truth, you will have fruits of connection. You will have peace. I, I don't know a human that lives principles of truth that's depressed no oh my god no please shut the fuck up please also this background music is starting to make me violent honestly this is such culty <laughs> vibes though like think about it if someone's trying to sell you something like these two are trying to sell you on this bullshit that they're teaching right that they've prepackaged in this little thing that they're trying to fix you like anything that you listen to or hear about or it's like cult vibes. Like, we'll give you this thing, and everybody who uses this thing isn't depressed anymore. It sounds like a scam, and that's because it is. So that's the reality of this situation, is they're prepackaging all this stuff and selling it to you in a way where you're going to be like, oh, well, I won't be if depressed I, yeah. if I use these things. But then here's where the problem comes in, is that if you are depressed while practicing principles of truth, it's not their fault. It's yours. It's yours. What are you doing? Could you be living more honestly? Could you be more humble or whatever? That's the kind of stuff that happens within um, religious or like religiosity. What do, we, what do you call that? Yeah. Like you start thinking you're not enough because you're trying your best to live what they're teaching and everything like that. And it's supposed to be a cure all, but it's not working. So the problem must be with you when in reality, this has nothing to do with you just living principles. Depression is a chemical imbalance in your brain and just being more honest is not gonna change that. Dummies. No, because there's not one. Yeah, and when, when I meet women who are depressed and anxious and talk with them, there's always, always a, a track record of one of those being uh, out of place. Either there's some somewhere in that woman's life where she needs to take responsibility and wasn't aware of it, yeah. or um, she there's some place in her life where she um, is being prideful and maybe doesn't see it, and and there's lying going on, lying to self mainly. Yeah, exactly. So we're not here to say, oh, gotcha, you're being dishonest. The reality is. I go into dishonesty. Oh, I do too. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, everyone so you're not does. Truth, you're if distortion. you're living and breathing, okay. you are going to go into that. Right. So that's not the issue. The issue isn't about like, oh, you should never have done that. The issue is that you become awake and aware and conscientious of when you are being dishonest, when you are being irresponsible, when you are not choosing to be humble. And that's where we come in and the connection support system comes in to support you. So that as you become aware of that, you can use this beautiful gift called agency. That's where we as cult leaders come in when you're starting to get discouraged and realize that the thing that we prepackaged to you that's going to solve all your problems isn't working. So when that happens and you do get discouraged, you come to us and then we just throw some indoctrination at you to re-up you just so we can continue yeah. this process. We meet with you more often. We take you, you pay for a retreat. All... None of this is going to be free, obviously. And we make sure that you're doing our stuff because we're going to end up profiting off of that. And you are going to be the same, essentially, to or worse. Different choice. And the outcome, the promise from God is that you can have a life of peace. I mean, truly, not, not feigned peace, but sincere peace in your life. 
I, I go to bed most nights feeling fairly peaceful because I know how to use my skills. I know how to use Sometimes my- I go to bed in rubies. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> agency and truth rather than distortion and that's what we want to teach you well the the beautiful difference between theories of man and and principles of god is that see there's that i can't shake it that that has to be part of the the coding that they're using it has to be because this is like mormon derivative remember everybody so they're Mormons. They're both Mormons. They're based in Utah County, which is one of the highest concentration of Mormons in a metropolitan area, suburban area, I guess. So you put principles in action, you get the same result every time. So if you want to build a fire, I, I don't care if you're from America or you're on the other side of the world. It's the same principle. I don't care if you speak, um, you know, uh, English, Swahili. It doesn't matter. What? The principles are the same. If you want fire, you're going to need heat. You're going to need. Um, oh, here we're watching you're some going fire to need now. A, a wood so source strong? of some kind, some kind of fuel. You're going to need um, a spark. You're going to need combustion. There's going to need to be friction. All of that comes together and builds a fire. And if you want connection. If you want this stress in your life to be alleviated, it's not try this. It's, yes, principles of truth heal the soul. And it's not a theory that God gave to man. These are truths. We do come from. When you tell the sister missionaries that you don't want to get baptized and they're desperately trying to keep you as an investigator. Well, and mind you, (laughs) Keith. In the Facebook group, this has happened time and time again, where people are like, I thought this wasn't a religious thing. And they're like, it's not. And then they say shit like this. And it's like, okay, Just say it is. how is it not? Like, <sighs> so dumb. Higher power. And he does give us principles that govern our soul. So if you are feeling sick, if you're feeling out of place, and therapy is working for you, I, I think that is awesome. That's amazing. Don't stop what you're doing if this is working for you. What Jody and I are here to do is to invite people who were like me and who have been in Jody's place and have not found peace in theories of man and need something else. Yeah. And that's what we're here to offer. Yes. So we'd like to actually share some comments that we have received mm-hmm. from, from you. Let's go. And we want to address them. Here we go. Here comes good old Calm down, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. <laughs> I'm going to get a replay sin- on that in the in the editing process. <laughs> sincere comments from some very sincere people. Mm-hmm. and um, That just tells me right there that they wrote these comments. When they're like, these are some very sincere comments from some very sincere people. Like, you know when a kid is lying and they just like really elaborate and elaborate and yeah. elaborate to prove to you that they're telling the truth even though they're lying? That's what this is. <laughs> I think it's important that we talk about this. I want to invite you to really consider, is this working for you? Are you getting the help that you need? Um, These comments um, might reflect how you feel. So comment number one is, I've gone... Because we wrote them that way. (laughs) If there's no screenshot, this shit did not f***ing happen. This is just in the notes app, I guarantee you. Multiple different therapists is that it initially feels okay but as I keep going I just get worse and worse until things are so bad I can't keep going I've never gotten anything out of therapy that I couldn't get from just talking to people on the internet which actually has been come the fuck on you guys if your therapist isn't giving you things additionally to like basic self-help shit that you've read on the internet then try a different therapist Like, and here's the deal. Sometimes therapy does get worse before it gets better, especially if you're working through trauma because nobody wants to dredge all that shit up. But if you're working through trauma with a trauma specialist who's really getting into the nitty gritty details of it and is trying to, you know, work you out of that trauma so you're able to move on, it might feel worse at first. And you know what also might feel worse at first? Couples therapy. I tell my couples that sometimes it's going to feel really bad before it starts to get better. And that's just kind of the nature of the game is that you've got to, there's a level of accountability, which is ironic because these two are like accountability, 
But there's a level of accountability that has to be had. With trauma, generally, it's not your fault, right? But, like, in cases of communication issues or marriage therapy, like, every person has unhealthy coping skills or, you know, unhealthy patterns and habits that make it difficult to communicate. And so we've got to own our shit because we each have our shit, right? And we got to own it. So it's ironic that they're like, oh, accountability, but that's part of therapy. And that's a hard thing to do is to take ownership of the things that you're doing that might have worked for you for a long time, but don't work for you anymore. Yeah. And that sucks. But it's not so you just progressively get worse. Like if you're seeing a therapist and over time you feel like you're just getting worse, that's not the right therapist. If you're in the heart of trauma work and processing and grief and loss and those types of things, then it might feel worse for a hot moment. You know, yeah. that, that's just kind of the nature of it. If you're really working through some trauma or, you know, some challenges. But if, like, it shouldn't be a permanent downtrend. Like, eventually you're going to get back up. Does that make yeah. sense? And if you don't feel like that's happening, find another therapist or approach your therapist about it. Like, you know, you can, it might seem intimidating, but you can go to your therapist and be like, okay, I'm just feeling like this is not working. Can we talk about this? I mean, you're working together. It's not like you know you do pay them but or your insurance pays them but you're working together the and internet is not specialized to you yeah no like there might be i mean the internet has you know helpful skills and things that you can yeah. learn like you know google coping skills and you'll find some that might work for you but ultimately like a computer cannot do the job of a therapist and if they could it would have been happening a long time ago yeah and so therapists are highly trained and specialized and able to help you specifically a computer is a one size fits all method. Even if you're looking at strategies for people with anxiety, my anxiety is different than his anxiety. Hmm. So like, we've really got to specify here. And if you're consulting the internet for things like that, it's only going to get you so far. For real. I mean, trauma is like an injury essentially, right? Yeah. And just like if you break a bone, you can self set that bone and never go to the doctor and Eventually, it will kind of start feeling better. You still hurt all the time, probably. But, it might but not you're properly. able to go. But if you go and you get it actually fixed, it's going to fucking hurt. And it might hurt f- worse than it was before because if you self set a bone, they got to break it and put it back right. But long term, long term, you're probably going to get better. Maybe you'll still have a pain that persists to, to the end of your life. There's no such thing really as fixed but you can get a lot better than you were before. So if it is getting worse, that could be a good thing, but it's something to be monitoring, obviously. More productive for me. Hopefully they're talking to people in truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you mean, so, yeah, hopefully so we're talking that. to people in truth. Is that, um, this person is, is desiring to feel some foundation under their feet, like feel some stability under their feet. And they've gone to different um, therapists, and I don't know exactly what they're looking for. And they're walking away saying, I'm not finding what I'm looking for. Well, let me, let me tell you, those of you who feel that way about um, life coaching, therapy, meditation groups, what, whatever modality you're going to, that you're not finding peace. If you are willing to come and learn about principles of truth and actually willing to humble and choose to be responsible and choose to be honest, you will find mm-hmm. calmness. You, I mean, this sounds so, you know, kind of like, hey, you do this and you'll have, have joy. And the truth is, if you actually do live principles of truth, you will have the fruit of joy. Bro, this yeah. is That's literally, so this is a fucking missionary discussion. I, I swear to God, this is exactly how I would operate telling people like if you read the book of mormon you will feel peace in your life if you get baptized you will feel a sense of love from god and things like that they're ripping that that same pitch off and in this situation i not to say that the other thing is not damaging but this is far more damaging because it's directly related to mental health it is. Well, and it's just like any other cult. Like, think about Teal Swan. Same bullshit. Like, I, the one person, have the solution to all your life's problems. And if you just follow, listen to me, and pay me an inordinate amount, inordinate amount of money, then, you know, you'll have the peace and things that you search for in life. Yeah. Like, it's just absolute bullshit. Because even if you... 
like it's hard to explain this to me but because i get people are like you don't want to be in therapy for the rest of your life and for a lot of people you don't for some people like myself you do because it just is that it's helpful because ultimately, even if you do all these things or check all these boxes, it doesn't mean that your life's going to be perfect. And so the idea that they're like, if you just do this, then your life will be happy is just not accurate. No. Like, and it's the same way with therapy. If you just go to therapy, then you'll be happy. That's not the case. Therapy gives you the tools to deal with things and the support to deal with things and somebody to go to to help you navigate things. This is just nonsense to be like, if you just do these three things then your life will be happy and you'll be able to tolerate anything and everything that gets thrown at you. Well, no. No. That's fine and dandy, but no. It's not realistic. Yeah. And in the case of Teal Swan or the, that other guy, you end up, in Teal Swan's case, like, you just keep going and going. You feel like you're not getting any better. And then you're getting drowned in a pool by her cronies. That's, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't get to that point with these well, two. So if you're trying to um, engage in distortion and still find joy, you you will not be successful. It won't matter where you go. You must be willing to choose principles of truth, which is learning how to be honest, responsible, and humble. And there's many other principles, like be compassionate, know how to clean up your side of the street. Another word for that is repent. How to forgive, how to be long-suffering, how to be patient, how to this be is a religious truly thing. kind and genuine and sincere. These are all principles of truth. Yeah. Well, what comes to my mind is man is that he might have joy. Man is that's Mormon. A, that's out of the Book of Mormon. Adam felt that men might be and men are that they might have joy. Verbatim. Is that he might live by principles of God. It's the same thing. Those principles of God bring joy. Exactly. A lot of, I, I think this woman, whoever wrote this, <laughs> me <laughs> Jody's like eh. when you go to a therapist and you're being enabled and you're being coddled and you're being handheld that after a, at first that does feel good yeah and then after a while when it doesn't <laughs> fix the problem it, it doesn't feel dude good. you should feel called out by your therapist stop jesus dude. oh my god okay here's the thing i get that this is a delicate issue because your therapist has to develop rapport right you should have a rapport with your therapist where you feel comfortable with them and you feel safe with them because therapist isn't like being a therapist isn't just telling your clients that they suck they're there you are so beautiful i love you like they're gonna say that and that's part of my job because it's true but i'm also gonna point out to you like Let's examine this for a moment. Is this a healthy habit? What do you think? Is this reasonable to do in response to this? Is this unreasonable? Is there a skill that we could use here that might be more beneficial or healthy than the other coping skill, which tends to cause you pain? Like the role of a therapist is not to just coddle the client. Like the rapport and relationship is important and that has to be there first as a foundation. But a therapist should be able to safely and comfortably present these things to you so that you're like okay yeah maybe that's not working or you know yeah. and it's not me like calling you out for it for it and being like look this piece you piece of shit why the fuck can't you just get it to like that's not what happens it's just like let's examine this for a moment so like when x happens you get this outcome is that the outcome you want no okay so let's figure out another way that we could do this that's maybe more healthy so this idea that ruby's putting forward that you just coddle the people and you know you're just like, oh, you little beautiful little human. And the fact that Jody's not correcting her on this makes me think that that's what potentially Jody was doing, which might not <laughs> jive potentially. Because if she was just doing that with her clients, then yeah, she's probably not going to see progress. And she said before that she wasn't seeing progress with what they were doing. So maybe that's it. I don't know. This whole dynamic with Jody is yeah. just really weird. Well, and not to mention, let's remember that Jody's solution to what she deemed an issue was, was to report her client who was viewing pornography or something to that nature to the honor code office or to his bishop. Mm -hmm. She broke confidentiality to report him for sinning. So he could get kicked out. Yeah. Which she was operating under the church's uh, family services. Mm -hmm. Um or was a referral at least. Or yeah, or, or something of the nature. So she was in tune to what the expectations of his institution were, 
but that is not okay. So. Yeah, and, and the reality is... I guess when you're a failed therapist, you have the liberty to talk shit about other failed therapists, I guess. That all of us as humans, we want to be responsible for ourselves. At the core of us, mm-hmm. we really do. You take a little child and you say, okay, we're going to pick up the toys. And they're like, eh, I don't want to do that. And then what you get on your hands and you start no. saying, hey, let's, throw, let's throw the toys, let's throw the blocks into the... Let's have a game. And and then they start getting excited. And then we get all done cleaning up the toys and you go, how's that feel? And they're like, oh, it feels so good. And it feels good to them because they like a clean space. Their spirit likes order. Those are all principles of truth. They like to be. When's the last time you had a toddler, Jody? Yeah, you seem a little uh, (laughs) disconnected from reality. (laughs) Because it's not just our kid. I work with teens. I have teens that are like, I would rather rip off my own arm than clean my room. Like they're, And even after I clean my room, I still would have rather ripped my arm off than clean it. Like, this is just a wide generalization that does not necessarily Holy apply. Holy shit. Responsible. They feel proud of themselves. They feel competent with themselves. And so when you are being engaged with, whether it's a, a, a friend or a family member or a therapist or or a coach or whoever is in your life and they're not inviting you to be responsible, you will not be able to have joy. You will not be able to find relaxation and peace and calm and connection. You'll you'll wonder what's what's missing. Yeah, something's off. And what's missing is that you're not empowering yourself to show up and be there for yourself. Let's go to number two. A lot of therapists are not good listeners, ineffective communicators. (laughs) Failures at their job. I agree. <laughs> that was written by Jody. It definitely sure. was. It definitely was. But I agree there are a lot of therapists out there that are like that. And this is not like some secret. Like there are plenty of competent therapists out there who think this. Like it is just true. This is not like something like some groundbreaking secret that's going to tear down the profession. Like this is true of any fucking profession out there. Like, it's just unavoidable. People are not perfect. And there are people that got into the field and hate their jobs. And there are people that got into the field for the wrong reasons. And it's just, there are people who loved what they were doing and eventually got burned out and aren't providing the services they used to provide because they're burned out, but they don't have a choice. They have to keep going. And so it's not necessarily- Yeah, once you put six years into a a degree, not even the job, just the fucking degree, what do you do once you're burned out? Obviously, it's the same thing with like teachers and everything like that. And it's what pisses me off because people just generalize about teachers because they had one possibly or even just heard about one bad experience with a teacher that should be fired because they don't give a shit about their job or something. And they're getting protected by the union or whatever stupid talking point that they've got. It it happens in every profession. There's always that person at your work that doesn't try or whatever. So find a different therapist. To use this as like this broad generalization that you go to one bad therapist and the whole field is terrible, like it's inaccurate. And I get that it might be frustrating when you go to like you finally work up the courage to go to somebody and then they're terrible. I get how discouraging that can be. Yeah. Like I get that. But a lot of times, like it's like with anything, it's like I'll say a lot of times it's like dating. Like you've got to find somebody that's the right fit for you and you've got to try a few out before you find one that works for you. It's the same thing with medication, like especially psychotropic medication. Like it takes time to find one and it might take an extended period of time and you might have to change five or six times. And it sucks, but it's worth it because eventually you'll probably get to one that really jives with you and that really helps. And once you get there, having personally had a lot of shitty therapists in my life and now having an amazing one, like it makes all the difference and it's possible. So stick with it, even though I know it's hard. Yikes. That's... I'm a therapist. <laughs> no, you're not. You are not a therapist. Not right now. You're not a therapist. Do not say that you are a therapist when you're not going to be operating under your license in a manner that is up to snuff with that license. I don't don't take that personal. (laughs) Okay, okay, number three. Unless something goes disastrously wrong in the first session, it's hard to tell if you're dealing with a poor therapist. I I can vouch for that. Or rather, a noticeably poor therapist. 
it they're, can take a long time before you realize that. Well, they're talking a lot about of times, these things no. like they're deal breakers. Like, yeah, you don't like think about when you go on a first date with somebody. Like, yeah. you have an hour to get to know this person, and they have an hour to interact with you. And that first session, generally in an intake, is them just asking you like a million questions. And so, are you really gonna have? rapport developed in that time or really understanding during that time no because i'm just trying to catch up on your many years of life in an hour so yeah yeah, right away you might not know if it's a good fit or not but that's okay it doesn't mean the whole profession is shit it doesn't mean that therapy on the whole is debunked like (laughs) these wide generalizations (laughs) are just driving me insane even proponents of therapy will tell you that it can take a while to get an idea if your therapist is a good fit. So it takes a long time to even figure out if you've got a good therapist at all. Can we talk about what good therapist means? Yeah, yeah, and good fit. Yeah. So One that doesn't break confidentiality. That, for starters. Everything in Connections is broken down into truth or distortion. It's not broken down into good or bad. So I don't know, it sounds... To me, <laughs> like those are on two ends of a spectrum in a binary, if you will, just like good or bad, you know? So I really encourage people not to use the words of, you know, this is good, this is bad, this is right, this is wrong. Instead, everything is looked at and scrutinized through the lens of truth or distortion. And that's what. Here's what just happened here. The first half of that. Talk makes sense. I tell the cl- I tell my clients the same thing. This is what we would call a cognitive distortion or a thinking error, which is where I think of a lot distortion? of distortion. Yes, it's literally called a cognitive distortion, and there are many of them. There are also we also call them thinking errors. But black and white thinking is a thinking error, and it can be a pattern that we all easily fall into. It's the always and never black and white. When in reality, the brain doesn't tolerate ambiguity well. So we like to be in one or the other. When in the reality, a lot of our situations require so much. a middle ground, a middle ground or a gray area. And so we have to do away with the black and white and find that somewhere in the middle. And so it's hilarious to me that she's like, don't use good or bad, wrong or right. Because then she's like, use truth or distortion. It's the same fucking thing. <laughs> do away. Do away with the black and white thinking. Now do the red or green thinking. Do our black and white thinking, damn it. <laughs> this is so powerful. So if, if I'm your trainer and you're sitting across from me, you can know exactly if I'm telling you principles of truth because you can scrutinize pr- principles of truth. You know what principles So then why do you need her then? <laughs> Do not ask the forbidden questions, Jordan. Oh my God. Do not. Truth look like. You you know when someone's being sincere. You you can see it, you can feel it. You know when I know y'all aren't being sincere. I can see it, I can feel it. But we're in distortion, so we wouldn't anyway. Someone's being humble, when they're being authentic, when they truly are being um, thoughtful and compassionate towards you. You know when someone's sincerely wanting you to be responsible for yourself or they're they're taking responsibility for themselves so this isn't about like is this person good i just wanted to note here this has nothing to do with what they're saying but i feel like we don't have a multiple camera setup but i feel like don't cut to the other shot in the middle of a sentence maybe wait for a turn of phrase or a break of something like that i don't know just i you know it looks like you've got a nice production but the cracks show i'm an amateur as well i just am letting you know what i think you know for me it's about is this person teaching me principles that actually govern healing that's what this is about and so you know i i hope that there's mental health um people out there that, that aren't just doing therapy but they're doing coaching and other modalities of healing that are teaching there are. principles of truth. If you are receiving principles of truth, you will recognize it mm-hmm. and you will start changing. Mm-hmm. The one thing that is consistent, Ruby, that I get across the board when I was doing therapy, if you will, I was learning principles of truth. I had been- I love that she calls her own practice, previous work as therapy. If that doesn't tell you how she functioned as a therapist, I don't know what will. Self-report. Taught them from a spiritual source. 
and I was sharing them with my clients and I was not teaching them theories of, of, you know, that humans had created. I was teaching them about, you need to be responsible for yourself. And I watched people and my own life transform right before my eyes. I, this isn't something that I just believe in. I have watched thousands of people change as a result of them using their agency. Thousands she- of people in our Facebook group who are primarily yeah. made of snarkers. And for, for whatever reason, they just won't leave a five-star reviews. I'm begging and pleading and crying, shitting, pissing myself <laughs> for people to leave us five-star reviews. Jeez. And it, also, what do they transform into? A fucking Camaro? Like, like, what are you seeing here? Even before people review bombed them, which we did not encourage or participate in, even before people did that, they had reviews where people were like, Jody destroyed my entire fucking family. And so she's like, I've just transformed people's lives. And she acts <laughs> I, like... I guess she has. I mean, you have, just not for the better. And she's like, you want a therapist who will teach you these things? And I'm like, okay, guys, let me let me give you a little tidbit. And I have my own personal opinions on this. But there are Christian therapists. There is Christian counseling. You can find a counselor that is specifically, you know, tailored to your a religion or spirituality yeah. or... There are Mormon counselors. There which are. She, I guess, was LDS Family Services. So, so that being said, like, if that's what you're looking for, you can go find those things. Like, you don't have to, like, just be stuck with a therapist who doesn't agree with you. Like, I have my own personal opinions on that. But if that's what you're looking for, then those things are out there. So she's acting yeah. like she's the only one that's able to provide this service. And because she started spinning this God-inspired services, which... Just in my opinion, to use that and maybe like if she wasn't telling clients where that was coming from, to me, that's highly unethical behavior. Um, I personally think LDS Family Services and Mormon therapists who push things like this on their clients in general is just unethical, but that's my own opinion. Um, Part of being a therapist is you check your own shit at the door um, and you go with the client. Um, I work with Mormon clients and my shit gets checked at the door and I support them and honor their thinking and their values and their religion because that's my job. So this whole idea of like, let's integrate Mormonism secretively in this, like, I'm just not a fan of that (laughs) or to completely transition from regular therapy to be like, you know what? These theories are shit. So now let me tell you about something Joseph Smith said. I'm going to teach it to you. Yeah. The fact that BYU has a social work program is unethical in and of itself, in my opinion. I don't think that they should be able to have a program in social work that is accredited, but, you know, what are you going to do? True. So it wasn't like, oh, she's a, she's a good, good counselor. And most people didn't like me, and the reason they didn't like me is because I was inviting them to be accountable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and a lot of- <laughs> <laughs> This is a self-report, you know, and she's under the assumption that if you ask your clients to do something they don't want to do or ask them to take accountability for something in their life that they could potentially realize or change is like, she's the only one that's doing that. No, Jody, you're the only one doing that, being a complete fucking bitch about it. Because there are therapists who do that day in and day out and they don't have clients quit on them because you're being such a fucking bitch. Like, there is a difference. There is a difference. Big difference. A lot of people are not interested in being accountable, they're interested in just complaining. And, and I knew that <laughs> that me. wasn't going to help them with finding joy or having peace. Well, what I was interested in when I was looking for a therapist, we went through a, a couple, when I say we, Kevin and I, my husband, <laughs> And, and we, we weren't looking for a good therapist. We were looking, I was looking for someone who would side with me and he was looking for someone who would side with him. <laughs> That's been a good therapist. Somebody who sides. She's, she's the best therapist we've ever had. Oh, she's the worst therapist we've ever had. She doesn't agree with anything. She thinks I'm the problem. Well, that's why I love her. <laughs> yeah, that's really common. If that, if that is your therapist and you're going to see a couple's therapist, that is a bad therapist. That is a bad therapist. <laughs> if specifically couple's therapist in general, your client is the relationship, not the individual. So this does not, and in Ruby and Kevin's case, it might be because the therapist was calling Ruby out on potentially 
issues that she needed to be, you know, take some responsibility for and be like, okay, I can fix this too. But that's a two way street. Your therapist isn't going to side with one individual. And if they do find a different therapist, because it's a balance, I'm not biased towards one of my client. My client is the relationship and I will call both out as needed. Therapists out there watching that, don't you know that? That's what goes on. Yeah. But when you start teaching principles of truth, when you learn principles of truth, it's not about me. It wasn't and about it, citing. And no, and it's not about Kevin. It's about our choices that we're using. And if our choices were in truth or in distortion, and so yeah. there's no taking sides. It's, it's, Hey, I'm ta taking the side of connection. I'm on both of your sides. Exactly. And here's what you, where your choices are. And here's where your choices are. It was very clear. Yeah. It was very clear. And that's what I love about connections is it's mm -hmm. very, very clear. Simple. You know, you, you don't have to. This is like the most unclear thing. It's so ambiguous. I it's don't understand so, it's what just clear so general. Be. It's just so general and vague. And it's that by design. So people are like, okay, yeah, maybe I am living in truth because what does that even mean? Trust. It can mean anything. It really can. It can mean nothing. It means whatever Ruby and Jody want it to mean yeah, in the moment. Because they are truth, obviously. And just feel like this person across from you is guiding you in the right direction. You can know if you are being taught principle of truth because you can, like I said, you can go through the characteristics of truth. We've done several videos about what truth is. So yeah. that's what's wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, number four. In and my yet I still have questions. someone to sit down and talk to me doesn't actually solve the underlying problem in my life. Mm -hmm. Even if I had the best therapist in the world, paying them to sit down and talk to me wouldn't solve my anxiety about money. It usually worsens it. <laughs> I mean, entirely valid thought yeah. and an entirely separate issue. Um, I totally agree. Therapy generally is not as accessible or affordable as it should be, as is most things with healthcare. Like there are yeah. immense barriers to therapy, especially for, you know, people of color or people who are currently, you know, living in poverty or, and everybody should have access to therapy. And that's my own opinion, but affordable therapy and, you know, like good therapy yeah, with a good therapist, but es that's just not the way the world works. Especially like, it's just here not. in the United States where if you do, if you have Medicaid or whatever, your choices are pretty slim as to what you can pick from on your therapist, like relative to your geography and if they will take your plan or not. So basically, if you want good therapy, you have to pay out of pocket. Not necessarily. In a lot of cases. there I, I'm not trying to talk shit on anybody that takes Medicaid or anything like that. I'm sure there are tons of great therapists, but it definitely narrows the pool by a lot if you can't pay out of pocket and that's your only option. Well, and it, you know, it's, it's just not, it's the same thing with the healthcare system. Like everybody deserves access to free generally or extremely affordable health care but it's not the way the freaking united states works and it's just i wish i could fix that and i wish i could provide that for my clients and it's it's double-sided because therapists go through a lot of schooling and spend a lot of money and generally don't get paid a ton and especially if they panel through insurance they tend not to get paid and so for some some therapists it's easier to keep food on the table if they go private practice and don't take insurance it doesn't necessarily mean they're a better or worse or any therapist, but there are plenty of good therapists out there who take insurance. Like my private practice and the people that I work with and even my boss, who's amazing, included. So I get it. I totally get it. If this was an aspect of therapy that I could fix, I totally would. There are some resources out there to try to make therapy more affordable. There are places, like there's a lot of therapists who will do a sliding scale, which means you get kind of a, a variable of payment you can ask the therapist if they have one um generally if you based on you know your income level and your situation they might put you on a like a lower rate based on somebody who could afford it um and there's even some nonprofit organizations and places that will pay or give you a voucher for therapy to go to so those are things to explore but i get it and it's maddening to me too that not everybody has access or can afford it yep <laughs> Very true. You know, I, I, I think about this as like going to take your car. You, you hear something wrong with your car and you take it in and they, they look under the hood and they're like, yep, all right, found the problem, got it fixed. That's going to be $200. 
and then that's what i say Again, after every session the, that's a joke the b-roll too yeah uh this shit that's smoking yeah shouldn't do that and that guy's like yep that'll be seven hundred dollars home and you're like well, how come they didn't catch the leaking oil how come the back tire is leaking air they didn't say i'm gonna have a flat tire here in about 10 minutes it's the therapist will go only to the problem you're sharing with them and it's really the symptoms that you're sharing with them yeah this is these are the Bruh. outcomes of all these choices that others have made. that is definitely not the case well and yeah if you're only telling me about one problem yeah. i mean i am limited in my understanding because i'm not in your brain and but, it's not just treating the symptoms, it's treating the root of the problem. Are there therapists out there who only treat symptoms? I mean, maybe, I don't know, but it's twofold. That would be disappointment. You have to help manage the symptoms while also doing some examination into if there is a root to the problem yeah. or if they just do have symptoms. Like a lot of times there is a root to an issue, right? But we have to make symptoms manageable for the person so that they're not living in panic attacks all day long every day. Yeah. Like the symptomology and the root cause both need to be addressed. It, um, that have affected me or all of the choices that I have made and now I'm experiencing these uncomfortable outcomes. Yeah. And with connections, it's addressing the whole car. We're going around, we're looking under the hood, we're looking inside the car, we're looking at the fabric, the interior, the fingerprints, we're looking under the carriage, we're looking at the tires, we're looking at air pressure. That's the kind of approach I take with my clients. Because people aren't one dimensional. Yeah. Like people are gonna come to you as a therapist or a mental health professional with maybe like one big thing in mind that's causing them significant issues that like one thing might be symptoms it might be trauma like there's one thing that generally takes priority for them in their life and that's the thing that you want to address first right is the in most cases you want to prioritize the thing that's bothering them the most or the thing that they want to prioritize the most but there are other things that you find out along the way and if you only meet with the therapist one time are they going to be able to identify to identify all those other things that are going on probably not but as the nature of therapy goes on, the more you share, the more they learn. It's like, oh, we should probably explore that. Oh, we should probably talk about that. Ooh, there might be something going on here. This might be contributing to your thinking about this. Like maybe there's a, like a little T trauma over here. Like that's just kind of the nature of therapy. So this nonsense just absolutely makes me insane. And I don't even want to listen to this anymore. We don't want to listen to the made up questions. No, I don't. Or comments about whoever whatever the fuck yeah and we don't want to give jody a second opportunity to say i'm a therapist because that's not true are you really right now i mean you still have the license so i mean sure i guess you can say it but in the nature like with what she's doing right now i really wouldn't want to say that no because then you're spewing all these things as a therapist and is it ethical yeah. to spew all these things as a therapist based on some of the things you've said about you know don't let people like don't let your kids take medication because that's not living in truth and if your yeah. child says they're going to kill themselves then you know just ignore them because they're just thinking attention like are those all ethical therapist things to do i don't know yeah or invalidating people who are gay or trans or any number of variations from the hetero norm or encouraging parents kicking their teenagers out of their home or sending them to unethical abusive troubled teen industry wilderness camps or you know taking their bed away making them sleep on the floor taking christmas away and giving christmas to the other siblings that's just f if that's who you choose to work with jody then by all means you know wear that therapist badge with pride go for it you have my fucking my uh my support. permission you have my full support however doppel i don't know let them know about that <laughs> so yeah that was a lot of bullshit i can't believe they have that background music throughout the entire I can't believe I didn't rage quit. I really thought that I would have <laughs> Jordan by was now. like, oh, dude, what if I just like throw my mic and storm out of here? I was like, do you know? I was anticipating it. I, uh, 
They didn't say anything too me. maddening, and we're not going to watch the rest, so maybe it was saved for the end. But really, it's just taking, like, small critiques of therapy and being like, do away with the whole thing. Like, yeah. No. Oh, you've had one tiny bad experience let's extrapolate that to you're probably just not cut out for it and you know what come over here come join our some solid ground you're not gonna find it here because we're gonna put oil snake oil on the ground and we're gonna watch you struggle but you're gonna cling to us thanks everybody for sticking around that was fun that was fun hopefully you had some popcorn to throw hopefully you didn't play my game from earlier um, because I hope you have somebody to call an ambulance for you. Don't encourage them to do that. <laughs> I'm not encouraging anything of the sort. Please do not uh, take my advice. I'm not a professional, and that's a bad idea. If you liked what you saw or heard today, hit that subscribe button down in the, below. If you're uh, listening on a podcasting platform, save our podcast so you can hear us. Every time we drop a new episode, we do Wednesdays. This upcoming uh, week, we're going to do it on a Monday because we're doing a giveaway. But, you know, that's how it goes. If you'd like to support us, you can join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Jordan McKay. Or if you're on YouTube, you can just go down below. There's a little button that says become a member. And it is the same thing as being a patron. It's just integrated with YouTube. It's cool that way. There's a lot of cool exclusive content and other perks that you can get if you choose to support us in that way. We also have merch. You can check out Happy Brain Collective on Etsy or Teespring, and the links are both in the description for those. Or like I said at the beginning of the video, you can check out our candle on xmocandles.com. We also have our Instagram and TikTok. You can find us at Jordan and McKay. We post on Instagram basically every day on stories and stuff. And uh, we try to get a TikTok go up and going every now and then just to keep everyone updated and stuff like that. And last but not least, our amazing Discord community. We're in there. There's a lot of cool other people. If you catch our live chats, you probably see other people from the Discord in there in the comments section too. Come hang out, amazing people in there. Thank you everybody for sticking around to the end. We love you and we will see you next time.